grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, also with you. and welcome to this service on the fourth Sunday of Easter. It's really wonderful to have so many folks out this morning. We continue on page 185 in the Green Book. <clears throat> with the Easter greeting. <laughs> Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen in you. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. May, May he fill our hearts, hearts with joy. joy. And we pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue with the collect for the day. O God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do your will, and join in us that which is well-pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please be seated for the proclamation of the word? A reading from the book of Acts. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled into Jerusalem with Anus and high priest Cabez, John and Alexander, all who were in the high priest family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone, who was sick and was asked how this man had been healed, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that the man is standing before you in good health in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. 
There is salvation in no one else, and there is no other name under heaven, under among the mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, and I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words that I speak and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In the resources supplied by the Anglican Church, this Sunday could be Earth Sunday or Climate Justice Sunday when we celebrate and pray for, to quote from the BAS, this fragile earth, our island home. Or it could be named Vocations Sunday when we are encouraged to pray for those who, who have or are planning to take the vows of ordained priests and deacons or those who take the vows of religious orders. And yes, we do have monks and nuns in orders in the Anglican Church. Or if you were at St. Mark's down the road, you might have to fit in your patronal feast today as well. Traditionally, though, this Sunday has been known as Good Shepherd Sunday. Because the Gospel reading teaches of Jesus in the role of a shepherd of God's people. Those are the readings we're using today. So I'd like to start by telling you a shaggy sheep story. There once was an Australian sheep whose name was Jake. His claim to fame is that he managed to elude the shearing roundup for over three years. Now that's the kind of sheep that we can applaud. He behaved more like an independent human being than a herd animal. But this independence and rebelliousness could have been his nemesis. You see, his wool, which was reckoned to be enough to produce, to produce 28 large sweaters, got to be awfully heavy and hot to carry around in the Australian outback. It covered his ears and grew around his eyes like blinders on a racehorse. So he was lucky that in the end, it was the shearing gang that caught him and not some predator creeping up on prey that had become virtually blind and deaf. Well, you don't have to look very closely in the Bible to find that it is full of images of sheep. We heard one such passage this morning, and Jesus used the example of a shepherd tending the sheep to show that he cares deeply for all of his people. Unlike the hired hand, the shepherd is prepared to put his life on the line for the sheep. And Jesus, we know, did exactly that. Like a shepherd charged with the responsibility of caring for the sheep, we have all felt the burden of the responsibility in our jobs and our relationships and the motivation to discharge our duties well. There's also a love that develops between those who care for and those who are cared for, even when the cared for are animals. A shepherd with the personal care of a number of sheep would know their personalities even be able to predict how they might react in an emergency or in motherhood or even the stress of pain or injury. And the sheep would feel secure with that shepherd. In this, there's a message for the church. When we love Jesus, 
when we're charged with the responsibility of nurturing others who follow Jesus too. As a parish priest, and since I retired from more permanent parish ministry, I have served a number of different church communities for short periods of time. And I could list some of the ways, and there are many, that I have seen members nurturing one another in church communities, including here at St. John's, where love for Christ and love among the members is amply evident. But here's a story, since I'm in the mood for telling stories today, about another community and how it fed one of its sheep. Although it is a true story, I have changed the name of the individual at the center of it. Sue came to town as a young adult to live in a supervised group home with other developmentally challenged individuals. She had been living in an institution. Her family had found it difficult to cope with her as she grew older. Apparently, she had a bit of a stubborn streak, although I never saw much evidence of it. Sue joined the church and expressed a desire to sing in the choir. Now, there were only a couple of problems with that. Sue couldn't sing very well, and she couldn't read either music or words. She did know some standard hymns by rote, and she had a good sense about when to be quiet and when to speak out in church. The choir director and the choir welcomed her into their midst. They had to make a few adjustments in the regular way they did things. The choir director was successful in encouraging Sue to sing softly, except on those pieces that she really knew, and those cropped up every few weeks. She usually sat at the end of a row so that only one choir member had to concentrate hard to keep in tune with the others. Sue proved commitment by attending practice and worship every week. Members of the choir and the congregation, too, were willing to listen to her complaints about her health, her living arrangements, and other difficulties. And she also regaled us with accounts of the good times she had at social events with her community living support network. She had a good sense of humor, and she loved social events. And when she fell in love, we were very happy for her, and then we commiserated with her when her boyfriend's parents thought the match inappropriate and broke it off. Since Sue arrived early every Sunday, she took on the responsibility for starting the coffee machine, and she often helped with coffee hour. In her quest for independence, she decided to move into her own apartment in a small complex. The choir hosted a housewarming shower to help her equip the place, and after moving out on her own, Sue began to experience several severe headaches. She sought treatment at the local hospital ER a number of times and talked to many of her friends about her pain, but none of us knew enough to figure out what was happening to her. Sue died of carbon monoxide poisoning in her apartment. The church was packed for her funeral, and that was a testimony to the number of people who had loved and nurtured her. A full choir sang to her friends from the community living services who were both confused and saddened by her death. And church members were well represented among the mourners too. Sue had come without any apparent gifts to offer. The choir did not need any more members, particularly one who couldn't sing, but the community recognized someone who needed nurturing. Despite her independent nature, Sue knew that she needed the nurturing of the people around her. She shared her stories, her thoughts, and her emotions with vulnerability and trust in our caring. And we, in turn, learned to recognize the gifts brought by one who helped us see life through the eyes of a person who experienced different challenges and frustrations from ours. There was no real place for Sue when she came and no way to fill the hole she left. Sue's church community, for the love of Jesus, made a place for someone to feel useful, even though they were, there were already enough people to do the work. They offered her the gift of listening and caring. That is what Jesus asks us to do in all of our life environments, not just the church. And I hope Sue's story can guide us to be increasingly alert to the ways in which we can serve, and the times when we are served by others, the times when we are the shepherd and the times when we are the sheep. Amen.
Let us turn to the words of the Apostles' Creed, which we will find on page 189. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to stand, sit, or kneel, whatever is best for you to pray. Our prayers can be found on page 126, prayer number 18. <clears throat> In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for all those who are alone. We pray for this community, our country, and the world. For the just and proper use of our creation, and oppression for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. We pray for our bishops, for our priests, and for all bishops and priests and other ministers, for all who serve God in this church. In the worldwide Anglican Communion, we pray for the Anglican Church of Australia, Primate, the Most Reverend Jeffrey Smith. In the diocesan prayer cycle, we pray for vocations, for ministry, ordained, lay, and the religious life. In our parish cycle, we pray for Jesse, Mason, and Jason Humphreys, for Hubert and Audrey Isaacs, for Jenny and Michael Youngworth. We pray for the congregation of St. Mark's Orangeville, Randall Shea, and St. Maria School. We remember the world for a long and lasting and peaceful resolution for the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians and for the people of Lebanon and Syria, for the restoration of peace and security in Haiti, for those who are experiencing the unrest and hunger in Sudan, for Ukraine, for its people and leaders, we pray for peace. For the people of Afghanistan and Iran, we especially pray for the women and girls whose rights are being denied by their government. We pray for the orphans of the world and for all victims of violence. We pray for truth and reconciliation for all refugees and asylum seekers, for all the unhoused. Hear us, Lord, 
for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for the sick and the suffering. Betty Cartwright, Audrey Lees, Logan McCaughey, Taylor Small, Donna and Chuck Davis, Erin McCarthy, King Charles III, Pat Russo, Debbie White, Shirley Barnes, Ron Coles, John Porter, the Honorable John McDermott, Boris Pusjak, and Catherine, the Princess of Wales, for Laurent Le Duc, John Hall, Christopher Frankham, Norma Hamilton, Eric Copeland, Marie, the Vandershot family, Dave Fowler, and all those who are known to us. We pray for all those who have died in the peace of Christ and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. We pray for Glennis McWeg and for Rob McWeg and family. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. Gracious God, you have heard the prayers of your faithful people. You know our needs before we ask, and our ignorance in asking. Grant our requests, as may be best for us, this we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Turning again to page 191 in the Green Book. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites us to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. God of loving care, you spread before us the table of your life. Give us the cup of salvation to drink, and keep us always in the fold of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Shepherd. And we continue with Eucharistic prayer number three, page 198. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth, we give you thanks and praise for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb who has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us eternal life. Therefore, joining our voices with the whole company of heaven, we sing our joyful hymn of praise to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you, in him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, 
by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We are using sentence number eight for the breaking of the bread. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Amen. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
redeemed by the blood of your Son. May we who share in these holy mysteries come safely to your eternal kingdom, where there is one flock and one shepherd. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. And we say together the doxology on page 77. I beg your pardon, 214. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of God, whom we know as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you and those you love, this day and forevermore. Amen. Just a couple of announcements this morning. Firstly, uh, this Tuesday, we will have a parish advisory board meeting at three o'clock and Archdeacon Michael, well, gone. Archdeacon Mackison will be with us uh, to be a part of that and hopefully he'll have some ideas about what the summer looks like for our worship here at St. John's. And then at seven o'clock the same evening on Tuesday, we will be having our uh, first uh, full Teze service. We haven't had one of those in five years maybe, close to five years anyway. So we hope you'll come out for an evening of uh, quiet meditative prayer and uh, singing along with us with that. Uh, and then on Friday at 11 o'clock, we will have the funeral here for Glennis McQuaig, who was a faithful parishioner at St. John's and Mon Mills for many, many years. The last few years she's been uh, at Dufferin Oaks in Shelburne and uh, we we're sorry to see her passing this past week. So it would be wonderful if we had, I know the choir is gonna be here, at least part of the choir for that, and uh, it'd be nice if we had some of the parish to be in the congregation that day. Thank you. And please join us for coffee. Oh. Cereal. 